Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video we are continuing onward with our 70 Project Beetle convertible project. Uh, as you can see here, we are assembling the body, uh, putting the accessories on, fender bees, bumpers, tail lights, things like that, and uh, still moving on the top. This is my first time attempting to do a convertible top. Uh, I used to job that out, but uh, we're actually attempting to do it ourselves, and we're following some good how-tos out there, but uh, if this all turns out good, I'll eventually do a how-to on convertible top installation. But for this video, I want to talk to you about one thing that's notorious on the convertible beetles, and that is your door gaps. As you can see here, this gap is actually pretty damn good. Uh, but it wasn't like that from the get-go. Uh, when we married the body back down to the chassis, uh, the gap was very wide up top here. So it would kind of go out more like a V. You might have a common problem with that uh, on your convertible. Um, so what do you do in a situation like this? You know, we did new support rails. You might do new heater channels, new heater channel bottoms or something like that. And now all of a sudden the car's painted and uh, you don't want to start messing with... Uh, with bodywork again. So, um, one way to rectify this is I'm going to go up with my lift here and show you what we did. Okay, so we have the car up on the lift here, and I want to show you, you know, since the convertible bodies do flex a bit, they have some movement. Uh, even though we have all brand new uh, support rails on this car, um, there is still some movement because there's no hard roof, right? So what we had to do was the rear shock tower area to close this gap, okay? So for this gap to move this way up top here, as you can see in the rear shock tower area back here, okay? I'm gonna zoom in for you. And what you notice is that I added a bigger piece of rubber that goes in between the body and the shock tower. Okay, and I also added a steel plate on top of that thick piece of rubber. Okay, now normally, the rubbers that they give you when you buy a body piece uh, or the body shock pads, like say from Wolfsburg West or CFP1, they only give you these two. Um, and they're pretty thin, as you can see. So um, it's, you know, one on each side. But what you can do is they sell the rubbers for thicker rubbers for usually the front beam, for the front end that goes under by the, uh, the gas tank area. So where the front beam marries to uh, the shell. So you put these thicker pieces of rubber over uh, the studs there, and that rubber is probably even thicker than this. And then what I also did was, I got a square piece of metal, drilled a hole, and put that square piece of metal on top of this rubber and then put that under here for a little more support. As you can see, I don't know if I'm getting closer here, you can see that piece of metal that's on top, just to boost that up a little bit more. Now, again, it all is gonna depend on how bad your gap is. Our gap was pretty significant, so I, th I felt that we needed some more support there to pull this car, uh, to squeeze this car together. So uh, that's a tip there real quick uh, to change your door gaps. I mean, if you have a situation like this, even with sedan, it might be, you know, uh, another situation, another thing you're going to have to do to fix that problem because you got a hard roof and you're not going to be able to really squeeze the car. But um, that's that tip. And, you know, usually once you, even when I uh, have the car up on the lift here, it's tough to open and close the door because the car is actually being, is off the ground now. And you'll notice that, you know, if I try to open this door, it's pretty much like it's locked. It doesn't want to open because it's, it's being held pretty strong uh, on the striker plate here. So, but once I drop the car off the lift, I can open this door now. It opens and closes just the way it should, and that gap is now really good. So it is amazing how the convertibles do flex. Uh, and look, they flex over time. Uh, you know, think about it. This is a 70 Beetle. It's almost 50 years old. If you have a convertible Beetle that's even older than this, you're over 50 years old. Maybe you're 60 years old. So you've got to give these cars a little bit of slack. You know, it's, it's amazing that they're still being held together and, uh, and working and operating as they should, right? So 
Um, that is that tip for today, guys. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me, Chris at ClassicVWBugs.com or visit my website, uh, www.ClassicVWBugs.com. Quick tip, bigger rubber in the rear shock tower area, close that gap, and uh, I think you'll be pretty happy. Okay, take care. Um.